here, we substitute per iteration. Okay? So at n, n is equivalent to 0, we substitute all of them. Okay? Substitute, substitute based on the variables involved. Next is proceed to this one. After finishing, we need to finish per iteration the values for x1, x2, x3. So upon finishing, we utilize all of these three. Now, the uh, the concept under gauss seidel is that when you are done with x1, you already know what is the value of x1, and then you need to solve for x2, shown here. Basically, let's say, let's try this one, okay? On the first iterate, all right? So we need to solve for x1. So we need to solve for x1 is just substitute the initial estimates of x2 and then x3, that will become one and three, right? Then solving for x2 now, since we already solved for x1, the value of x1 is 2.85 now, right? Now, use that 2.85 here already, okay? You don't need to wait, okay? You don't need to uh, wait uh, for the uh, first iteration, second iteration, and so on. That would be complete per row, okay? So when you already done computing for, the, uh, for x1, for example, so you just substitute that one. Okay, that's the concept. So we use the current estimate on the preceding variable, okay? Now, to make it uh, more clearer, the same example as before, initial SMEs 1, 1, and 3, we will be just using gauss seidel method here. Um, we have the, the first same principle. You need to check if it is diagonally dominant since we utilize the same example. We just interchange the first equation and then the third equation to make it a diagonally dominant matrix. And then after that one, same Use the reduced form as does uh, Jacobi. After finding for the reduced form, right, here we have the, the solution process. So we use the current estimates. So solve as we have the, said a while back, solving for x1 here okay, is substitute the initial estimates 1, 1, and 1, uh, 1, 1 and 3 x1, 1, x2, 1, and then x3 is 3. So here is our reduced form. We need to substitute x2 as 1 here, x3 as 3, right? We have 2.85. So write that down, right? Here on your table, okay? Next one is all for x2. So in, uh, instead of waiting for all of this one to be completed, right? no need to wait, just use, okay? Uh, just use the existing one, which is 2.85, right? So more clearly, instead of utilizing the previous one, since we have the first step here already, instead of utilizing one here, right? Negative 0 0.11 and then plus 0.33 minus 19.3, since we already solved for x1, so use that one, okay? Okay, and then that's it. So you have already solved for x1 and then x2 here. I use that one instead of using 1, 1, okay? The previous one, which is 1 and 1. Okay. So on, uh, on Gauss Jacobi method, we, we utilize uh, 1 here as x1 and then x2 as 1 also. But in Gauss side, we utilize the current one, which is 2.85. And then negative 2.66929, right, as shown here. Okay, so that's the difference. To make uh, to make this uh, cos seidel method more uh, clearer to understand, so we have here the first solution on our problem goes using Gauss Jacobi, and then this one is Gauss seidel On the first iteration, as you might notice here, uh, no problem with the first with the solving for x one. We have the same. I use the initial estimates in Gauss Jacobi method. Okay. We just utilize okay, the initial estimate okay, on x1, x2, and then x3, okay, all throughout. However, in Gauss uh, Seidel method, if we had already solved for x1, instead of using uh, the initial estimate of 1 here, utilize the current one, okay, 2.85, okay, as shown here. So instead of 1, 2.85. No problem with x3, the same. Now, instead of use on the x3 part, 
Okay. Instead now of using 1 and 1, we utilize the solve already, which is x1 and then x2, which is shown here on this example as 2.85 plus negative 2.66929 instead of 1 and 1 as we have said. Okay, so that's it. Continuing with the solution process under gauss seidel method. Now to solve for the second iteration here, okay, here is the solution. This now we will focusing on x1, x2, and then x3 under these uh, values. Solving, substitute for uh, x1, uh, 0.1 x2. So use negative 2.66929 here. And then x3, so use 7.00111 plus 7.85. We get the answer here. 2.99443. Okay, solving for x2, 1 over 7, negative 0. Negative 0 0.1 x1. What is x1? Okay. Instead of using this one, 2.85, okay. use the current one is 2.99443. Okay. If you utilize uh, what is here already, you are using the Gauss uh, Jacobi method. Okay. Of you, however, you are using now the current value that is that is already been solved, so you are using Gauss Seidel. Okay. Uh, plus 0.3, x3. Okay. x3 is 7.0011. Since we already we uh, we do not yet solve for the new value for x3. Okay. Next, x3 is 1 over 10, negative 0 0.3, x1. Now, instead of using this one, use the current one that has been solved, 2.3. Uh, 99443 okay, plus 0.2. Now, again, instead of using this one, use what we have solved negative 2.49987 plus 71.4 equivalent to 7.00164. So, on. okay, so that's it. So, continue the process and then uh, based on this one and then comparing uh, both of the method, Gauss Seidel method is actually arriving or converging at our actual value or solution, which is 3, negative 2.5, and then 7, much faster compared to Gauss-Jacobi. On Gauss-Jacobi method, okay, we arrive at the actual value under 5 iteration. However, on gauss then we have arrived or converged at the solution uh, only at 4 iteration. That's it. <clears throat> So that ends our presentation. Our the learning objective met. We have discussed a principle of solving Gauss Jacobian and then Gauss Seidel method, wherein uh, we have said that the method of solving by Gauss Jacobi and then Gauss Seidel is similar. First thing that you'll do is to verify if your um, matrix or equation is diagonally dominant. After that one, use the reduced form. Right? Under Gauss Jacobi and then Gauss Seidel methods. After so after after that one, uh, for under Gauss Jacobi method, right, the method is use the initial estimates right, based on the problem. If not given at the problem, so it is safe to assume that you start at zero 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 if that is three equations. Okay, so after that initial estimates, so use that estimate. Okay, that you do that you have the utilize on the equations, all of the equations, x1, x2, and then x3. On the Gauss Jacobian. However, on Gauss Seidel, once you have already solved for x1 on the first equation, you use that one on the second equation. And you have since you have already solved for the x2, okay, so use that one on the last equation, x1 and then x3. So you have uh, as presented on the presentation. Okay? So for problem sets, uh, perform five iterations to estimate the solution of a given equation. Uh, use Gauss Jacobi and then Gauss Seidel. Compute and verify your results using MATLAB by uh, utilizing the uh, solved syntax that we have presented. Okay. So this uh, formally ends our presentation and the discussion under systems of linear equations, specifically using Gauss Jacobi and then Gauss Seidel method. Thank you and have a